This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Looking for training in a new career or just need help getting started on a new path? Are you looking for new employees, training for your current employees, or starting your own apprenticeship program? If any of these appeal to you, the Southwest Corner Workforce Development Board can help. With four Pennsylvania career link centers in Beaver, Green, and Washington counties, we can help you meet your career goals or to find the right employees for your business. Contact our offices at 724-229-5083 or visit us at www.southwestcornerwdb.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasts with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Beachview studio. Sorgatron Media Studio in Beachview. That's where we're doing. Hey, it's been a couple weeks since we've done this, and it's still the wrong day. And because September is so messed up right now, well, I'm glad you guys could join us. I know we got wheels out there in the chat room hanging out with us on this Wednesday night. But with us, uh, everybody else is busy on Wednesdays, except for Dave Potter of the Tiny Shutter Podcast is joining us with his cats. Hey, Sorg. How are you doing tonight? I'm trying to remember. Have you been on this show or have you only been on the wrestling show? I feel like we brought I, you on, right? No, no, not yet. What? Not yet. This no. is your debut? This is the debut. 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 Of course, uh, <laughs> the, Dave, butt. the butt. The butt. The butt. The yes, butt. The, the, the butt. That's yes. right. Producer Missy is here as well. The cats are there if you're on video. Uh, and there's all kinds of stuff, fun stuff going on uh, tonight. We should be returning the Tuesday nights, and we should be Tuesday nights indefinitely, and at least until the holiday break. Uh, I think we've fixed our um, conflicts of sorts, and uh, we should be good to go and returning to our regularly scheduled awesome. So in the meantime, this is the Awesome Cast. Go check out everything at uh, awesomecast.com. Subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app and watch video versions on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, and you can also ask your uh, voice thing whatever you have in your house that you talk to that may talk to you back hopefully that other people hear like a google home or amazon echo or or the apple home pod and ask it to play the awesome cast podcast on that device uh you may have to connect something to get it started for the first time like tune in or something depending on what you're on but uh also please uh, email us at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com tweet us at awesomecast and facebook awesomecast uh, we, we also have a great awesome cast group uh, where uh, there's a lot of discussion uh, going on there, including a lot of partner stories. We're already in the rundown because they were in the group. Uh, so, and we do bring in a lot of your um, suggested uh, uh, stories in uh, for discussion as well. And you can join us in the chat typically every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern on Facebook Live. We are also streaming on a few other platforms like Periscope and Twitch. Um, but uh, if you're looking to get in on the conversation, we are paying attention. Excuse me, paying attention mostly to the. Um, I just drank a Starbucks, so I'm a little <laughs> hiccupy apparently. Uh, <laughs> we uh, uh, and you can see the cat butt in in person, uh, digitally um, you know, over on the Facebook page. Uh, also, if you're catching us later on one of the other outlets, or you're on one, of, or or you're on one of those other streaming outlets, uh, and, and you want to tell us uh, what you think about what's going on on the show, uh, please tweet us at AwesomeCast with the hashtag AC four six two. Um, check out our streaming partners, RiversEdgePGH.com and the405media.com that are carrying these shows. Check your local listings on there and time zones. Trust me, time zones with some of those. And if you want to be part of our studio audience, uh, be hang out here or if you're interested in any advertising opportunities. I know we have a new advertiser. Uh, most of your outlets will be hearing uh, or have already heard at the beginning of this show. Uh, thank you so much um, for our good friends at Post Industrial working with them on growing that as well. Uh, and also thanks to our Patreon supporters helping to grow the show. Our friends at the Coffee Club $5 level, Matt Weller, John Diggy DeGore, and John Carmen. At the Fan of the Show $1 level, Michael Fedor, our longest-running Patreon supporter. You can support the show as well at Patreon, Patreon, Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Dave Bodner, 
I think it's the perfect week. If we're going to have any Yeti guests this week, and mostly because our schedule is so bad, it's been a week and a half since the Apple. Uh, well, I guess just over a week and since the just Apple, over a week, yeah. the Apple. I don't know I, I, what what state am I in? Uh, since the <laughs> Apple um, uh, uh, announcements last week, to have you on, and we'll get into a lot of that. But I want to talk about the thing that's not on my wrist right now. <laughs> I. Uh, your wrist is naked. I my see wrist that. is very naked. I have not completely lost my mind from not having that feedback. It's actually been kind of nice and a little bit, but well, there's a little there's a little bit of like I don't have things pinging me on my wrist. My Apple Watch is gone, um, and uh, I did not lose it in the ocean. No, but I thought I I, I thought I damaged it in the ocean uh, mm. for a period. But um, I, I know, and, and I'll take a second here and pull up the picture so we can show you. Um, so. While I was on my vacation, uh, I went to um, uh, Myrtle Beach. We did end up there. The hurricanes bypassed. We were good to go. Uh, we, I was like, hey, I get to use my, my watch in the ocean. You know, cool. I can finally use my water resistance and just say, and go do it. And if I get lost in the ocean, there's a cell signal so people can find me. Uh, <laughs> and I come back, and there's something wrong with my watch. I thought it was, I was like, oh, there's a crack here. Oh, it's not working too well. Although I think the working not working too well was all the salt water on my fingers, to be honest, when I got to it. Because mm. uh, my phone, when I grabbed it, it wasn't working <laughs> in a similar method. Um, so I, I, so I, I was like, you know, I threw it on, on the group and I was like, hey, guys. Check out this really inventive way that I, I I seem to have cracked my watch, and this is a Series Three Apple Watch. And and, and you, you guys on audio, it, it cracked originating in the if you're looking at the watch face upper left corner across the top and down the right side along like that you know the, the crease where 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 it turns and everything right. Um, and I was like, yeah, I, like, that's a weird way for it to crack. And I just thought I was just amazingly inventive in the way I've I've damaged my expensive devices. <laughs> You know, as we've discussed some of my <laughs> issues in the past, right, Dave? <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you're going to do something, do it well and do it creative. I do it in style. And, it was like, and I was fine with it. I'm like, you know what? There's a new one coming out. I got four payments left on this. Uh, I'll stick with this until it, you know, I won't jump in a jump in a pool or anything with it uh, anymore. Uh, but uh, like I ever really did that. Uh, but <laughs> so, uh, but still, it was, it was perfectly functional. And I was, I was good to just live with it, right? You know, it's not at least it wasn't cr across the, the front. It wasn't like a crack screen on a phone that just com made it completely unbearable. So I posted it in there and and our, our friend Amanda that, that works for works for the fruit company um, shared with us. Apparently, there was a screen replacement program they just announced a few months ago. And that described this very issue that I experienced. So I don't know if it's something that had started and like the salt water like made it worse when I went out there or something. But you know, it was it was kind of a weird that it, it that was the water resistant like jumping in the water that made it made it weird or something. Have you ever heard of anything like that, Dave? <sighs> Not necessarily that. The question is, how deep did you go, though? Oh, just because, just like, well, like waist deep. <laughs> that's believe it or not. Once you get beyond around three feet or so, mm -hmm. that's where the next level, the IP, uh, IPX uh, sixty-seven and sixty-eight, yeah, are the water resistant. It's really the depth that isn't. I mean, they're they're there for like, was it um half an hour for both of them. One's mm -hmm. two meters, one's four meters. Mm -hmm. um, that's your big difference is the pressure. Yeah. And yeah. that's why I was saying, but waist deep, you're talking two to three feet of water. Probably it was probably, under. Probably. So that's and a crashing good, that, waves and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah, so, yeah. And water has a whole lot of pressure mm -hmm. just being down there. So maybe, you got a lot of what pressure. So it may have been the pressure. If there was like a, very small crack or very small problem to begin with. Mm -hmm. Just that pressure may have just caused the additional, and then salt water just sucks for everything. Okay, okay. I I I, I didn't check. Like, is is salt water like, like when you're talking about like diving and everything like that? Like, are we talking pools? Like, you know, is it is salt water off the board? It's not really explained in any in any case. Uh, water with any kind of additive. Mm -hmm. 
the salt water, pool water because of the chlorine and everything which, else. Which would be the typical you would think is is that pool water. Right, right, right. I mean, now if you're doing, uh, oh, I'm washing my dishes and the water splashed on it type thing right mm-hmm. out of the tap. Mm-hmm. That isn't too bad unless you live in an area with like really um, hard water. Mm-hmm. With lots of minerals, but you know, salt, salt water, you're talking, it's got everything in it. God knows what's in it. <laughs> you you don't want, like I said, you, you see little kids out there and they're flailing around, you know, they're swallowing all kinds. You're like, yeah, l- let the kids deal with it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so you have all that, pr- you have the pressure and then you have all the little stuff, particulate matter. Mm-hmm. It It can mess up the internals pretty bad. Yeah, so and, and and I suspect that there may have been some damage, or at least some leaking in, um, yeah. And uh, and and maybe that was because it seemed like that that side wasn't working when I was trying to uh, yeah. plug back in my code, uh, yeah. but it seemed to resolve itself. So and I haven't noticed any problems since. So it wasn't a long lasting. Maybe just because it's a different LCD than than we're used to on an iPhone. Yeah, it could be because they are. I know the um, the watches are OLEDs versus LCD, so they're a right. little different that way. Plus, right. I, I know when the first, I, I forget if it was Series Zero or Series One, and they said it's water. That's before it got all it, the better seals, and then they were only called it water uh, resistant and not waterproof. Yeah. And Tim Cook accidentally said, "Oh, you know, I take my shower. I take when I take my shower, I just leave my Apple Watch on, and I go in." It's no big deal. And you could just hear the engineer saying, why are you saying that in public? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're telling people not to do it. And here's our CEO doing it. Well, even even <laughs> with the new the new announcements with the uh, the water resistant rating uh, for the new iPhone 11. So we'll talk about yeah. it in a little bit. Um, they're talking about like, you know, some it was a I think it was again from I or something uh, mm-hmm. saying, hey, yeah, you know, no, every time you take it down the water, like it's only good for so long. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, every time you go in there with the seal and again, it, it's not the water being corrosive Mm -hmm. it's really the pressure Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you put it in there those seals Mm -hmm. you got all that pressure just kind of squeezing in on it so if i go for a weekly swim at my local gymnasium if i go for you know something regular like that that's probably not a good idea to just leave your watch on every time i would say if you have a series four or five it should be okay Mm mm-hmm because they're more designed to do that than and the, and the threes weren't and the cameras uh the three i don't i have to think mm-hmm. i think the three's not it, it's still good okay but it's not as good okay because okay. i'm trying to think does the three have the water spit out feature it does i think it was the first to have that okay okay so so i think they i, I think it's good but i think they made the four better Mm-hmm. the four and the five better but yeah like you said anytime i mean you see what let's say because you actually don't you think about it, you don't really rinse off your watch Typic- if you go swimming typically so you know think about something as simple as oh if you took uh, a pair of swim trunks and you're done with them you take them off and you just hang them to dry and you don't rinse them off and you put them back in the chlorine you put it back in the chlorine. Not only, well, forget about what happens, you know, wearing them that much, but that chlorine is going to start eating away at it. Mm. And, you know, chlorine, salt water, that's corrosive long term. It's really the, the pressure, though, for like in the immediate why water rushes into the electronics. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you remember, this was, oh, like, was it? I almost want to say 10 years ago maybe eight to 10 years ago when people started to sell, we'll dip your phone yeah. in this special bath to make it waterproof. The li- yeah. The liquid, the liquid uh, mm-hmm. uh, screen repair or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And supposedly it made you, and no, it didn't. I think, <laughs> I think there is a, uh, a little report of twit. I think he famously like dropped his phone in he a did. bucket and it didn't work. Right. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yep. They said, well, we're going to put this to the test. It's like, yeah. we don't want you to like, <laughs> stress test it but like that's the i accidentally dropped it in the toilet exactly. you have a better chance of surviving and right. even this latest stuff with the iphone water resistance ratings that's probably most of it right 
Well, exactly. Either way, uh, uh, I I I didn't want to send my thing in because I went, you know, I didn't I didn't want to pay three hundred dollars for a two hundred dollar watch because <laughs> your series three right mm-hmm. is now two hundred dollars. Yeah. Um. So I went to the Apple Store. Always a great experience in there, and always just great to kind of see what's going on. There's some class happening because we had that nice one in the South Hills as a giant screen, mm. and the guy was literally like going through what are the buttons on your iPhone. <laughs> like your iPhone and your iPads, you know, and, and it was showing that, that kind of stuff off. So it was one of those like kind of like beginner classes and stuff. Um, it's uh, it, it's always a good experience. It's already I took it in Monday. Uh, um, you know, yesterday it said that my thing was done. <laughs> and wow. it should be coming back soon. Although it says repair replacement products, so I don't know. You know, to my to my recollection, it was going to be a, a a replacement screen. Um, but if it's a new, brand new one or a refurb or whatever, I'm cool with that too. Yeah. You know, obviously they're not fixing that in house in in the in the store themselves, so I did get sent away. But um, yeah, they looked at it, looked it up, checked the serial, and they're like, "Yep, we're good to go." Again, just my awesome thing is just. Um, something like this, known issue. Um, Apple seems to take care of these things more often, unless you're talking keyboards. <laughs> <laughs> Took them long enough to get to that one, <laughs> right? Like I'm hearing stuff like, "Hey, if you happen to have this MacBook, you know, bring it in." There's a, there's a thing, you know, it's like a car warranty, re- you know, recall yep. or something at this point. Um, and it's it's a lot easier than who's really taking their Lenovo in to get fixed. Yeah, and especially the fact that. The Apple people, and then you know, you generalize as much as you want, but they're pretty good trained, especially the repair people. Mm-hmm. You're not talking, oh, I'm working here as my side job, or I'm, or you know, well, I don't, I can't get the job right now, but I kind of know a lot about technology. I'll see if I can be a member of a squad, let's call it mm-hmm. a G squad without naming names. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, and yes, Apple products are expensive. Mm-hmm. Like I said, we're, when we talk about the iPhones, the, the pros, even though pro, um, they're pricey. They're mm-hmm. very, very pricey. But you kind of pay for the service a little bit. Mm-hmm. And software updates, that's good for years and years and years. And that's why we talk so much about Apple. Um, that too, yeah. And along the last thing, <laughs> we'll talk about that too. Dave, what is your awesome thing of the week? I found I didn't have anything on me that I saw that was awesome. And I don't know how much uh, awesome you can consider this. But this is something that kind of peaked. And I'm actually going to put it in the... Um, the Facebook group chat here and well, that's not awesome. And the cats are going, (laughs) please, please. But, um, it is something that is Pittsburgh and Richmond, Virginia exclusive for right now. Oh yeah. It is coming out from KFC. Oh, I think I heard somebody talking about this today. Yes, because we all love fried chicken. We all love donuts. So what could be better than to make a Kentucky fried chicken and donuts sandwich? No, they didn't. Say it ain't so. Oh, your arteries are hearing them yell and scream. They are indeed. Mm-hmm. Donut on top, glazed donut. So, if you will, a crispy cream type donut mm-hmm. uh, on top and bottom, sandwiched with a chicken tender in the inside. Jeez, <laughs> jeez, yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I checked if if you're local to Pittsburgh, there's uh, the um, the the link I shared. They do list the locations, and they are rather extensive around Pittsburgh. So it isn't just a matter of uh, one or two stores, but yeah, it, it literally donut with chicken on the inside. Man, now, I've I, been really good about trying to eat better this week, and then you gotta <laughs> you gotta do something like this to me. To be honest, this is not too. In, this is something. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still chicken it, at its base. It, well, well it, it's also KFC chicken. Yes. Here's here's <laughs> here's my response on this. Mm. Okay. You're a wrestling fan. Sorry. Oh yeah. Uh, partner. People within our wrestling community 
generally eat weird stuff. That's true. I yep. have seen wrestling people tweeting and putting on Facebook that they have tried this today so, because oh. it came out. Mm -hmm. The successful St. Jordan Styles was like, should I should I live stream <laughs> unboxing this? And I'm like, yes, always yes. <laughs> yes, that, that is one of the ones oh, yeah. that I saw yes. that, that had it. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is, this has become a really interesting thing for the Pittsburgh market. And the fun thing is, is there are crazy people here in Pittsburgh who will totally buy onto this mm -hmm. and they will totally use their social you media. Know what? Yeah, I was stuff. like, Hey, let's stop by KFC last night before that gig we were doing. Um, and you're like, ah, no, let's go to the, the same old, same old. I'm like, now I know, but we could have had a chicken sandwich with a donut. I'm sure that would help with our anxiety level of last night's gig. Uh, but, uh, you know. <laughs> And now you're totally holding this against me, aren't you? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. It's okay. You order dinner for tonight, so you you it wasn't there's no donuts and donut chicken involved, but still. It's like, man. Anyway. Well, well, I would say also, it is a way, let's say if you're a restaurant chain, seeing another chicken based restaurant chain tend to get a lot of press mm -hmm. over not having food available. Mm-hmm. It is a good way to at least get your name out there. Not only, not only that we got food, we got what the f is this food? <laughs> hey, well, here's here's the thing though. Chicken and waffles has been a thing forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The the draw of chicken and waffles is that you get the crispy chicken, you get the waffle with the syrup, sweet sugary sticky syrup. Essentially, they are putting that together onto a less with that glaze messy. There. I don't know, sort of. Messy, yeah. Well, mm. it's not running all over my hand. There might be a wrap on that. Um, like it's, it's not running all over my hand. It's it's a glazed donut. I can deal with glaze on my fingertips and whatever, but it's not literally running down my hand and my arm. True. True. Well, either way, we're, we're trying to get our hands on this. Get our, get our mouths on this. Um, so, uh, there's somebody else that is uh, no stranger to uh, interesting uh artistic uh, uh food concoctions are our friends at slice on broadway supporting pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza uh i mean if you check their instagram you've seen uh they went football season they've had some some fun uh, uh, uh inspired concoctions with pizza they made some hello kitty uh, they made a they made a dough doll shaped like hello kitty for daughter's birthday one year for us um, like this is, it's, it's pizza and it's art. It's Slice on Broadway, Beachview, Carnegie, the East End and PNC Park home, the Pittsburgh Pirates all around town. So please go check them out. Let them know that you heard about them on the awesome cast and you're here. So a reminder, partner, please do not kick the door down. No, be fair. Be nice to them. <laughs> be nice to them. Be nice. There was an ongoing, um, 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 <laughs> pirate campaign amongst uh our listeners including dave here on the wrestling mayhem show <laughs> about go kick the door down and yell wrestling mayhem sent me and i said please please don't do that <laughs> <laughs> to which dave has sent me i think on several occasions now him um going to try to cook, kick the door down or, yes. or 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 even or even i had i had a a fellow wrestler um um, messaged me and she said I was going to kick the door down but it was already open and sent me a picture <laughs> and a live report uh, so that was that it's amazing what's happening there so thank you so much Slice on Broadway for supporting all of the shows here on our <laughs> typical podcast night with awesome cast and the wrestling mayhem show all right let's get into let's see I, I love I love so normally this is the part where we go into the stuff on the board <laughs> but it's all partner stuff uh, right now so <laughs> <laughs> but generally, let's let's get into iPhone. You know, obviously there were a lot of announcements last week. I think we, you know, there's a few stories um, um, uh, about this afterwards. Um, I, I have one. I this is the second. Uh, I don't think I've sat through an Apple announcement this year. Maybe like an iPad one earlier this year or something. But I didn't do WWDC. I didn't do this. Uh, I I've been busy both times. I think I was. I think I was in yeah. Michigan on an automated. Uh, car course <laughs> when they mm. did the last one oh, yeah. um so i mean so yeah i've been busy but also i'm not feeling like i'm missing as much sitting through the thing right um right. Yeah. I, I love like when the virgin gadget whoever does hey here's the here's the uh iphone 11 announcement in 11 minutes and it's like all the it's the super cut of everything i need to know from that without all the you know fluff and everything an hour and a half of my life uh <laughs> so um obviously new iphone iphone 11 um we have you dave here uh, again the tiny shredder podcast which you know for those who don't know that's a podcast about 
iPhone or phone photography, I guess specifically the iPhone, right? Right, right. Uh, basically, well, to be honest, the way the reason why we all kind uh, the four hosts focus on iPhones is that's what we have. Mm -hmm. um, and most of us have had iPhones since the iPhone 4 or 4S. So it's more of and this is something if you want to call this evil by Apple, <laughs> the lock in. Mm -hmm. um, it's a matter of, yeah, we they've bought locked, this. They, they've locked in your podcast. Exactly. We're locked in. Even though we do have a co host thinking about buying a Pixel. Mm -hmm. uh, just a, not, not to use as a phone, just to test with. Mm -hmm. um, just to see what the, I hate to say what the other side deals <laughs> with. But you know, honestly, I mean, it's just, we're, once you're, and this is true with Android, once you're in a ecosystem, and you're comfortable and you know what you're using, it's mm -hmm. so easy to stay in mm -hmm. and it's so much harder to get out. It is. It is. I, I know I've dabbled with and picked up an Android device here and there, you know, secondhand or the Nexus sevens or, and then that's become mm -hmm. harder and harder to do. Um, so, you know, again, just to kind of know, know the platform a little bit. Right. right. Um, so I, I, so I don't pick up somebody's phones. Like, what do I do with this? Although that still happens when I pick up uh, uh, one of my clients, Samsung phones, I'm like, I'm not sure how this one works. Uh, I don't know where the things are uh, because it's even different than my uh, my Google device, right? But other than that, um, so it seems like the big the big thing this year is definitely photography. There's yeah. some, you know, there's updates. It's faster, more colors, slicker, you know, and everything. But we 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 have, especially when it comes to the pros, and even the 11 looks like it's a very capable. It doesn't feel like the discount phone, but it's cheaper than last year's discount phone. And by discount, we're still talking about seven hundred dollars. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think honestly, that's more that's a mistake Apple made two years ago mm -hmm. when they introduced the 10. Mm -hmm. Well, besides calling the 10, the having an X out. Mm -hmm. So people didn't know whether to call it the 10 or the X. Yes. Uh, that was a marketing. We're out of those woods at least. That is true. Yeah. We're, 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 we're back to regular numerals and away from Roman numerals. Mm -hmm. But people started to think of the 10 as your base phone mm -hmm. instead of two years ago, the eight being your base phone Which and the 10 being the experimental. And and and, the, and that's what I went with. I'm still running an eight. Um, yeah. There's Dave on the chat room. There, there. Uh, but, uh, and but you know I, they call this the base phone. I got the the what was it back then? Plus. Wait, which one is this? It's yeah, a big the, one. It, it, uh, the I big did, one's a plus. Yeah. The big one was a plus back then. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got the plus. I got two fifty six on it. Like I probably paid more than I think I, I did pay more than I think uh, Missy's iPhone ten um so and haven't really you know this is, i've been great i'm good i'm not like ready to run out and buy an 11 yeah. tomorrow you know and well that's the other thing is that the difference between the 11 and the 11 pros mm -hmm. because really the only difference between the two pros is the screen size and the extra lens uh not for the pros oh the, the pros themselves you mean okay. yeah the pros themselves but the difference the only really difference between the 11 and and the 11 pro, let's say if you were looking to, let's say you have a, an iPhone seven or mm -hmm. earlier, or you hit the lottery and you want a new phone, um, you know, so having that extra disposable cash, mm -hmm. um, really the only difference is the telephoto lens and OLED versus LCD and the screen size, whichever you prefer. But in terms of technical in turn, well, and I think the pro may have more Ram, but that may be, mostly just eaten up by the extra camera. And I don't know if I, I think they have some additional things with the OLED, OLED display they have to do. So it's not really that much faster. Mm -hmm. So 11 to 11 pro, it's n not really that much faster um, for your wide, your normal camera and your extra wide camera. They're exact same thing. The chip inside the exact same. Um, storage is a little, is a little bit less on the 11 versus the 11 pro, the options. Cause the 11 pro, you can max out at a half a terabyte, mm -hmm. which, which is still crazy in my mind for a phone. It's crazy. It, it, so to be fair, if I Plus, was, if I was much, up, but... if I was upgrading, I would be going with a pro max. 
Um, because I want the one that's 256. I want the one that's the bigger screen, right? And right. And, right. and the more and more, I just like you know, I'm using my phone. Like it, you know, it, well, we had a battery issue with one of our higher end HD cameras. I'm like, oh, why don't I pull out my phone and shoot 4K? <laughs> you know, for for the background stuff here, yeah. it, which is you know, more and more that's happening. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's I pull that out, have some shots, and they're right beside all the other stuff. Um, it, it's crazy what we can do with this. So. Oh yeah, yeah, and that's one thing with the, um, you can actually do this with the last year's model, the 10s and the 10r. Mm-hmm. Now, not built in, so you have to get an app. This is the Filmic Pro app, which is not a cheap app. Mm-hmm. That's a fifteen dollar app. <laughs> Again, laughably, not a but cheap app at fifteen dollars. No. Yeah, versus the gear I'm looking at to attach my phone to. Well, true, <laughs> very true, but there's enough cases where people look at an app and think, Oh, you want me to pay for it mm-hmm. or, Oh, it's more than a buck 99. Oh, I don't know if I really want to do it versus a video can, a video app, which is $15 with a $15 in app purchase. Mm-hmm. So that thing could just cost you 30 bucks on its own. Right. But that's the app that they were demoing on stage where you could actually shoot the three back lenses and the one front lens and see it on screen at the same time Mm -hmm. and select two of them to record. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's now that's not, that's going to be available later this year. That's not coming out the box. Now, what are we doing with that? That's the other thing too. Like what I, I think we're like, Oh, it's powerful enough to do this, but like, what is the use case for something like this? Uh, honestly, to kind of tie it into indie wrestling, there's your, you literally could have one guy with an iPhone sitting at a table mm-hmm. by the ring and you would have shot of the ring and shot of the announcer right there. Okay. One device. Okay. Or you could have it where you could do a zoom shot mm-hmm. and a wide shot at the same time. It could be amazing, you know. So really, we are at the point. I, I I kind of laughably see like some people shooting wrestling shows with 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 iPhones, but if you have like a steady cam and this and know what you're doing with it, it could actually be pretty decent. Oh no, it could. And I don't know. I don't want my iPhone there and potentially get kicked by a wrestler, you know. And then there's your your thousand dollar well, device out the way. You know. You know, with the right case, though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That with the right case, but no, I actually I went not to rise, not to rise, but I went to another wrestling show mm-hmm. um, as a fan and took some photos with my iPhone mm-hmm. and did a little video montage with it. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and I saw what they officially released from the production company. Um, my shots from my phone were a little bit crisper. And it, I I, I mean, it looked, I I don't want to denigrate anyone doing work, but, and they were using a little handheld, um, uh, video camera. Yeah. But I was getting at least close, if not equal in some cases, maybe a little bit better. Some of those better shots are probably Ruth. She has a better eye for, for the artistic, (laughs) no, for the artistic in terms of, framing a shot than I do mm-hmm. um, with my phone. And, and honestly, it was starting to get dusk and they were still turning out good. And then you see the new 11 and the night mode, which is in both the 11 and the pro. I said, this is an outdoor show that you're talking about, not like yeah. inside yeah. an gymnasium. No, it was outdoor. Yeah. It was outdoor. Yeah. 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 Now, when I did take pictures at the rise show in Springdale, it wasn't as good, but Again, indoor I, show I had lit trouble. by chandeliers. Yeah, we <laughs> sh- we shot that one, and we had trouble with the lighting. It it was not great. It just was a low light situation. Yeah, and we did what we could with it. With we, 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 you know, we don't have the highest end of stuff for for something like that. Um, but yeah, you but, know, working out with the venue next time, I guess. But uh, when you see some of the, and it actually was pretty good timing wise because yesterday, the um reviews were released Mm -hmm. they they opened up the embargo on the reviews and they were so positive they were amazingly positive yeah i I mean the only the negatives i saw were the pros too pricey Mm -hmm. um 
iOS 13 was a little buggy still. Some people complained about that. But it's not released yet. Um, so. But yeah. Yep. So, I'm, I mean. Go ahead, Missy. Oh, I was just going to say, I, I see that there's another story in here that you're talking about mm. or that, that you dropped into the group. And I'm going to put on my debtor's hat because okay. she's always talking to us about Snapchat. So I'm only going to mention the word Snapchat. Ah. If you could tell us a little bit more about that story that you put in there, I'm curious to see what the features are with that. Now that we're talking about all of the, these new cameras that are okay. coming up on yeah. the, the 11, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, no, no problem. That is actually with the front facing camera. Okay. So that's with the 10, the 10 S the 10, the 10 or anything with the, the, the depth camera. So Missy, you can do this on your 10. Yes. Cause that's what I did it on my 10. Mm -hmm. And basically if you, now if you updated Snapchat, we can do this live. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> and hopefully I muted so, this as well. So apologies out there. If this okay. Is out. So let me try to, okay. So oh, wait, we'll okay, go this, this is going to look horrible. This is going to look horrible, but okay. 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 So on the upper right of the screen, you have a little down arrow when you first open up Snapchat. And one of your options will be 3D. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what confused me. And this is honestly, it's one of the reasons I stopped using Snapchat. Um, the, 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 the interface is horrible. I'll just call it that. The user interface, I think, was horrible. Because they didn't explain how to use this, let alone anything else. So what you do is you hit the 3D and you take a photo of yourself. He's posing for you guys on audio. There we are. I'm posing. <laughs> I'm doing my best. Uh, you don't know how hard it is to be Matt Hardy pose there. Mm. So if you do the 3D there, I don't know how oh, well. Oh, wow. I, I kind of see that, actually. Yeah. And then if you slide in, they have. Oh, I don't want to do that. They have special. So you can oh, see wow. where the filters. That is cool. Are, you're actually behind the filter. So it gives you a 3D look there. Wow. And there's other filters where you go in front of a wall. So that's basically it, using the array of cameras and sensors that, that, that we're using for... for face ID. Face for, ID for the face unlock, yeah. And, emo and, um, and emojis and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it gives you that 3D. Now, this is one I posted to the group where... You either look like you're behind glass, you're behind ice, or if you turn the phone, you're defrosted. Now, are these like? Can I only? Can we export this to other formats? Can we shoot that to like the Facebook 3D photo option? Is not it, really. It, like it feels not. not that'd be great. If, if the it, only thing I could do was the way I exported it was I did a screen recording mm -hmm. while I was moving the phone around to show movement. Oh, wow. That, that's cool. Oh, hold on. Let me pull that up. So that's one way we can get that around. Let me yeah. That so I again. made a little bit. You can see this one as I'm moving the phone around. It actually changes the. Yeah. I'm showing the one on the on the, your comment oh, okay, uh, yeah. right now, actually. So that that is really cool. So you do see them and you see the ice and everything. You can sh show that one again uh, if you could okay. uh, for sure. the video people. Um, yeah. You see you see like moving flowers in 3D over top of them. That's cool. So what we're saying is that Debtors now has the opportunity to share 3D photos of her butt. Yes, yeah, pretty much. Yep. Okay. Wow. Um, but and again, we like the 3D photos on Facebook. You know, you 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 introduce those to the, us to those, and that's basically the portrait mode that was doing right. all the layering to make portrait mode happen. They were just kind of in, in you know translating that and turning it into a 3D photo. But this is a different method entirely. Right. Well, it's real similar in terms of using the depth effect mm -hmm. and the depth information, right? Which Apple's allowing apps to do. Nice. Is that so, a, is that a new thing that they're allowing them to do that? It was a new thing last year. Okay, because it's usually they kind of have it in house for a year for new features, and exactly. then they let it loose the next year. Well, you know, like kind of situation. Yeah. Yeah. So it's similar to. Um, for photography, raw photos, mm -hmm. where for the first year, you know, hardware and software, hardware wise, you could shoot raw. Um, but they didn't release it. Mm -hmm. And then after a year, they said, OK, we'll let third party apps have access to this information. And I think Apple's getting more and more open with what they're allowing. Certain things are not going to let you touch them. 
Yeah. Um, like the secure the security system, they're a little more locked down on. You know, in terms of like Apple Pay, using things like that, they're a little more secure. But um, the, like the 3D, you have apps like Focus, where it'll put even a better outline, and you can get crisper outlines of what Apple has built in mm-hmm. for 3D photos. And using that app, you can actually do a 3D view and a blowout showing depth. Hmm. So that's letting apps in another app like Halide. If you are heavy into photography and you want to do the nitty gritty hands on adjustments, that is a great app to take photos in because they go really deep. They were actually doing 3D depth with the 10R where Apple said, well, this is only used for people, for, for, for portraits. You can't use it for anything that's not a person. And Halide was able to go in and say, oh, uh, yeah, we actually see your code, so we're going to put our own app out, and we'll use the same thing, but you can do it for anything. Nice. And, yeah, Halide, Halide and they actually have a pretty good blog post describing the differences between it. Very real. If you're into the heavy technical side of it, they're a great blog to follow, too, for Halide. I'm gonna make sure we're touching on a few other things. We had uh, sure. um, there's a lot of other announcements out of the Apple uh, keynote, of course. Um, one big change: Apple Care is now not limited to 24 months. You can go to a monthly plan. You're going to pay a bit more for it, though. To be honest, and this is something I I think Apple's partially doing this because of the whole from a couple years ago. Oh, Apple's bricking our device after a year and a half. What's wrong with Apple? Mm-hmm. Now it's well, my phones, like you said, your your phone, you have an eight, my ten are they're basically twin phones in terms of internals. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with them. No. Um, and let's say you have this phone, you want to keep it for another couple of years, you get that Apple Care. I'm amazed the battery's still at eighty five percent. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, and, and that Apple Care covers. It's basically you know, similar to where cell phone providers, you can get the extra protection plan added in, but then it's like, well, your phone's this old. So you have this much of the deductible, you have this and you have, you know, all the little details Mm -hmm. where Apple care is. Oh yeah. uh, You cracked your screen. You did by accident. Okay. That's $35 and we'll fix it. Mm -hmm. And I think you're limited to like, or how much it is two accidental cracks a year. Yeah. I mean, still better than dealing with that and dropping another $300 on the thing. Right. Oh yeah. Um, so it's uh, it's it's good to. I think it's a pretty cool. Oh, subscriptions and purchases. Now you can't convert if you already if you already have like you know I still have on my iPhone eight my my Apple Care Plus because I bought it in like I don't know maybe March of of last year. Yeah. Um. So I, I have a good you know what six months left on it right. Mm-hmm. But beyond that, then you're wide open. But man, well, yeah. I think I'm at the point where I just go and tell my phone and like there is a problem with my phone. It's like, okay, it's time to buy one. Oh, can I go three months because the next one's coming out, right? Right. Like I, I, I think if you're within six months of the latest one that came out, I think you just pick it pick that one up, you know. Um, like I'm cool with that <laughs> at this point, you know. So but I mean I mean <sighs> I definitely look at the new new phones and and say hey that oh, looks yeah. nice uh new apple watch um as we were talking about my old apple watch like we mentioned no series four the season series three is go is going to be two hundred dollars and the new one includes uh and always on screen is the big news there i think yeah yeah and honestly that's this is one of those things you're like yeah the the, the series four watch is pretty good Mm-hmm. there's i mean in terms you don't want to make it any bigger really mm-hmm. um the battery life's good the obvious on screen is only is one of the few things that you could say yeah, yeah. i really wish i had that uh the the in depending uh there there were a few more things that it does like fall detection um which now is a concern that you know i kind of like hey mom you're getting that <laughs> you know if, if you have a loved yeah. one that that is an issue for that's something else to add on plus it's going to mm-hmm. have the ekc um which is like a mini ekg ish thing for your which heart work, which works amazingly good mm-hmm. because my dad actually has a pacemaker so he's in basically he is an afib mm-hmm. 
And when he was here visiting, we try, I tried it on him and it said, yeah, you're heart and aphid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's what your heart, here's what your EKG looks like. And if you want to, you can export it and email it to your doctor. It's another, it's, it's nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, because she's like, oh, I don't need the update yeah. from my 3 I was like, oh, yeah. yeah, no, we're probably going to do that here. Uh, <laughs> so, um, no, I think there's a lot of good options with that. Um, I think they added menstrual cycles to this one as well. Uh, so, again, just, just more things that you can do with it. No sleep tracking officially, but I got an app for that. Worked pretty well for me so far. Yeah. So um, they say it's not good. And it's like, well, it gives me a little bit of guidance and lets me know what I'm doing to myself. You know, it's just just that little bit of awareness, yeah. I guess. So so there's that. Um, they also announced, of course, Apple TV Plus is going to be $4.99 a month or you're going to buy a new device and get it for a year anyways. Yeah, which is that I, I'm kind of shocked about the price, how cheap it was that in Apple Arcade. Mm -hmm. Five bucks a month is I was, well, of course, an Apple TV to me, I mean, it still doesn't have, I'm, I'm, I'm not, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It really doesn't have anything I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, if you're like, oh, I need a new Apple TV because the stupid WWE network refuses to work on my old Apple TV yeah, and or tired of streaming or something. Yeah, yeah I'm sure I'll buy something sooner. Doing that, so we'll just buy a new Apple TV. Oh, here's this Apple TV Plus that's included. Huh? Well, I might as well watch it. Yeah, I think there's a lot of good options there, um, and it's family share and everything. So, um, you know, as long as one of us buys it you know uh, something soon and i'm uh, at least one family member is looking for a new ipad so uh i think i think that does it and keeps everybody in the ecosystem uh apple arcade i cannot wait until tomorrow when that launches and they check out what they have i think that's a no-brainer um it's a, i think it's a month free trial i just mm -hmm. i love i love whimsical indie titles and that's what i love on iphones Right. Yeah. I still play Alto's Adventure. I was diving back into Monument Valley 2 last night. Like that is exactly the kind of thing. Um, and it looks like there's a lot of that and a lot of really decent games. And uh -huh. if it gives me like I feel like I'm not using my Apple TV for anything. But if it mm -hmm. becomes I get to drop things on my Apple TV and I get to grab my Xbox One controller and just play those things. That is awesome to me. Yeah. Um, and on the Mac and on the MacBook and, and everything like that, like it's all going to be cross compatible, you know, that that's cool. Like I, 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 and I see Sonic all-star racing's coming back, which doesn't work with the newer phones, um, <laughs> since I bought it and then and everything. So, um, no, that, I think there's a lot of good, good vibes coming on with that. And, and, uh, we'll see, see how it goes, what comes out. There's at least a few decent publishers on there. Um, looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 like I said, the arcade interests me just a little bit more, especially just to try out. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I'm kind and that's one thing I didn't realize in terms of solid reviews. Not only do they have the Y for the new phones, not only do they have the wide sound, they have more an Apple brand version of 5.1, mm -hmm. where, oh, something's on your far left, it'll kind of sound on the far left. And if it goes across the screen, you can actually hear the sound move from left to right. So I can see games pushing that out, too. And I don't know if for the Apple TV, you know, that would be really neat to have a game where it's not just sound, but mm -hmm. especially for a mobile game where that's taken care right. of. Right. And then you drop it to your Apple TV and it's hooked up to your sound system. And you get the full breadth of it. You know? Exactly. That's, exactly. No, that makes a lot of sense. And, and, and eventually I know that's going to end up finally push me to maybe get a new Apple TV because I have, you know, that first, you know, edition uh, mm. that, that started with apps and stuff. Uh, but the new one's uh, 4K, so it doesn't seem like a, enough. But if you're like, well, we need a little more power to play this, um, you know, whatever game, to play your mm -hmm. Sonic Racing or whatever, right? Um, other than that... Uh, now, one thing real quick. For your um, family members looking for an iPad, mm -hmm. hold off. Oh, yeah? I didn't know how soon. Uh, normally, Apple tends to have an October event that's more iPad related, but they did slip out that new edition, uh, uh, the the introductory they one. Out the baseline, yeah. Yes. 
And it is. Right. Up, and right. so if that's up that, there, which, which is an amazing, like, that, I'm go, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I think we're getting a little bit of a uh, cross uh, bandwidth crosstalk here. Yeah. Unfortunately, our oh. amazing deal, 300 molars for the base. <laughs> Yeah, three, about three hundred twenty-nine dollars for the base for that includes uh, uh, the the special connector for keyboards and stuff like that. So um, yeah, no, it it, it 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 seems like so if they, they're bringing the technology down on there. What are they going to do on the on the top of the line iPads, right? So like that's making way for whatever is next. Um, hey, we brought this camera down to the iPhone eleven. Check out what's on the Pro, right? So. Um, Exactly. And that is, that is one rumor. That is one rumor. The new iPad Pros with the three cameras on the back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. We have we have an introductory for it. Uh, it. It amazed me to see like, um, hey, iPads have flashes on them now. Which one, does mine have a flash on it? Mine does not, actually. And this is the first iPad Pro 12 inch. Um, like, I didn't even think about that being a thing. No, okay. you know. So, because I, I always thought just classically iPads just had the lesser camera. So I never bothered with them. So, um, let's see. Walmart is taking on uh, unlimited delivery service, ninety-eight dollars. Um, I I actually played with downloaded the grocery app and went and picked up groceries, kind of in preparation for this because I'm trying to eat better and not eat out as much, right? Um, and do some proper grocery shopping. And it was nice to kind of pull up the app and then go out to the Walmart, which is like my third furthest away Walmart because the one that has groceries and pickup. Um, the weird thing is. And this seems to happen a lot to me with these kinds of services. It will deliver to the studio, but not to my house four blocks away. Right. Any explanation or? I have not seen one. I just no explanation. In, I, just... You, you plug in the address and it's it's allows it or doesn't, right? And I plug both of them in. So I may be receiving my groceries here at the studio to drive four blocks to my house. <laughs> Uh, it's like, thank you, I guess. I don't know. It, are we literally right on the line? Is it between here and my house? I, I don't know. But this is not the first time we've had this. There was something else that would deliver here, but not there. You know, there, there's been, like, I get 5G here, but not four blocks away from my house. That has changed since, you know, or uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the 5G EBS yeah. AT&T one. But, but still, um, yes. It's noticeable. Not, I mean, not not in 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 service, but at least like it's noticeable that I drive four blocks and it's not there anymore. Uh, but um, no, th- I mean, this is the competition because I I've been wanting to use my Amazon Prime for it, but they've kind of separated that out into like their Prime Pantry, and it's a little more like, oh, do I have enough in here? I don't know how this, you know, uh, kind of thing. But uh, I mean, you know, it's, sorry, local grocery stores, but you know, this is kind of the way to go for busy people uh, so and you know you're not getting like insane crazy prices because you're you're going with some kind of specialized service yeah. right so yeah, that is the one difference there yeah 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 that's probably going to be a thing um but that'll mean I'll, I'll eat out less um hey a friend of the show uh chris wetlatch um they have uh doors open pittsburgh uh 2019 inside tours uh they, they they have a few more for the rest of the oh i'm sorry this is am i screwing up my events here is that what i'm doing here what was this event it's like a four year thematic tour experience oh i'm confusing my events but uh we'll give a shout out here that i think this was shared by by chris um this is the doors open to pittsburgh this is what this is their like kind of thematic um experiences um fully fully guided uh tours for from local experts during the doors open pittsburgh oh and uh and i believe our friend uh chris whitlatch will be a part of this he's been mm-hmm. doing i've talked about a couple weeks ago his great notorious tours and everything so please go check that out we got links over there in the group and they'll be in the uh chat as well and missy you had a, a smart cane that you put in here as well if she's on mic Are yeah you I, I had completely moved on beyond where that's okay for, I, w- I didn't forget this. about it i just wanted to get it out of the way of the apple stuff no it's it's real cool um so yeah essentially one of the things that blind people have you know an, an issue with is obviously walking around and and being able to function on their own 
uh, you know, e- even though that there are assistive devices mm-hmm. available, they're not all encompassing. So this uh, blind engineer invented a smart cane that actually uses Google, Google maps to help people navigate. Mm-hmm. So instead of just giving like a clicking thing, uh, a clicking noise or some sort of sensor indication that, Oh, there's a curb here. This cane actually, it, it's a little more in depth than that. It will give, I'm um, with I'm getting to, to the information I was looking for. It here. was connected with Google maps. It's, it's connected with read, Google right? maps. So it'll yeah. give directions Similar to like I have my phone on and I'm getting directions. So it'll tell you, you know, turn here and, and, and all that fun jazz. But the other fun th- thing is, is that it uses technology that we use every day. Again, Google. Uh, so it's equipped with built-in speakers, a voice assistant, Google, and sensors that send vibrations to warn about obstacles above chest level. Hmm. Because think about it. Again, with with the canes, you know, they're low to the ground and they're t- they're working more on tripping hazards but what if there is a bicycle rack that's attached to the side of a building that they're not aware of? Mm-hmm. And instead of walking into it, this is allows them to, hey, you've got something above your chest. You're going to want to walk around it or, you know, avoid it type of situation. So I think it's kind of interesting because it's giving visually impaired people an opportunity to be more independent within their environments. That's awesome. And the best thing about it is, what would you think the price point on it would be? Oh, I, I especially something special like this, I, I, I would think it'd be like a thousand dollars. Five hundred bucks. That's not bad. That's not bad. Hey, that's 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 a middle of the road iPad, right, Dave? Yeah, so. yeah, and that that is great. That is, like you said, especially for uh, above the chest, you know, chest and above things. Like I said. You, you're you're in a mall somewhere and there's a kiosk out or mm-hmm. something hanging over where, you know, half the time people who are sighted are running into it because mm-hmm. they're not paying attention to what they're doing. Mm-hmm. I know I'm clumsy enough to. And, you know, if, if you ever in not if you ever want to if, and if you are sighted, if you ever want to th- kind of freak yourself out, walk down the hallway and just shut your eyes. Mm-hmm. Well, and the other thing that I'm thinking is yeah, try to figure out where you are and realize, yeah, what if someone walks, you know, perpendicular to you, have no idea what's going on. Mm-hmm. Not, mm-hmm. not that I'm expecting blind people to you know be getting in the car and driving to a different city, but you know, it, it allows for the capability of, okay, I do find myself in a new place. Maybe I've gone on a speaking engagement to a new city. You know, obviously somebody got me there in a vehicle, but I want to not have to have somebody assisting me as I walk from my hotel to go get something for dinner. Right. It's more than just that familiar bit, right? Exactly. Now I have yeah. the option that I can tell my Google where I want to go mm. and it will give me turn by turn directions that I can listen to through my device. Tell the Google. And like, I, th- I think that it literally opens doors and just a world of possibility for, for the visually impaired awesome. community. Yeah. Hey, uh, we got to get out of here. We got some stuff going on. It's been an awesome night. But first, I want to give a shout out. First of all, uh, not only, hey, we do this podcast, but we do a lot of other productions too with Sidekick Media Services. Check it out sidekickmediaservices.com. Everything from music videos to podcasts to live podcasts interfacing, uh, like we did the last night at the Carnegie Music Hall uh, conferences. So much more. Uh, what next big thing? Can we help you with and be a sidekick in your superhero project? And that is um, a, a shout out for something that we have been working with uh, as their sidekick. As uh, these guys are looking to be get on stage and be superheroes, our friends Dan and Drew that uh, just had their first um, live studio recording of the Dial It In Pod. I'm sorry, Dial It Down podcast. You can look up on social media on Facebook on. Uh, uh, Instagram and Twitter, dial, dial it down pod on any of those and dial it down podcast.com. Uh, we do not have an episode where we're putting a final touches on a few episodes here for release. Go look out for that. And I believe we were targeting and we'll look, we should be out there uh, still confirming the date in early October, October for another uh, great discussion there. Um, uh, something brought out of the uh, discussions after the uh shooting at the tree of life um um nearly a year ago here in pittsburgh um trying to uh, raise a level of conversation 
um, go check it out and check out the stuff coming out from that very very soon um also and you can check out some images of of uh and some clips of that um while you're at it too also on thursday morning or if you want to check it out afterwards we have a pittsburgh current podcast that we'll be recording live here and that is going to include uh special guest patrick moore of the uh, he's the director of the andy warhol museum and uh, going to be talking about the 25th anniversary and upcoming exhibition andy warhol revelation so go check that out with us i'll be live on the pittsburgh current um the, all the pittsburgh current video capable social medias actually and uh check out their uh, year in review that we did with them last week too and of course please check out our friends bardic mystery tour thrifty podcast comic book pit just released one yesterday and i think they are finally searchable on itunes uh bold pittsburgh sports has their own feed uh you can go to bold pittsburgh sports fire fireside fm uh, or you can look it up on your podcasts those should start populating here very soon so you can keep up on your sports chat with our friends over there uh dave potter i understand you have some podcasts to check out too oh yes uh we have tiny shutter which we record thursday nights um and release normally on friday um look for us in apple itunes under tiny shutter or the um tiny shutter.com excellent go check it out and of course missy is around to photo bombing our shots uh <laughs> if you saw the one from last night on my instagram sorgatron on twitter and all the main social medias too and uh please thank you everybody that's joining us in our chat room uh you have been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com